Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Seattle Pilots versus the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park. On the mound for the Pilots today is Bob Meyer, whose record is 3-5 with a 4.63 ERA. And pitching for the White Sox today is Greg Ballo, whose record is 3-4 with a 4.38 ERA. Well, we got one of our worst performances uh, of the season from one of the most unlikely starters. Uh, Gene Brabender pitched horribly yesterday. He gave up seven runs to uh, the White Sox, and we were out of it pretty early on. Um, not a lot of excitement in that game. We've lost a couple in a row. We're back to two games under 500. So um, we are in that phase where I feel like we lose a couple, then we win a couple. We're going to hover around. 500 i have a feeling for most of the rest of the year and so now it's just a matter of like how can we improve our team for next year and uh, sometime uh, i think in this next week of ball games there's a couple days off there um, i'm going to try to trade tommy harper and steve barber for for sure are gone um, can we get some good young players to replace them that is going to be the goal. Um, they're both, they both have good enough ratings, overall ratings, where I think we should be able to get like integral parts um, to fit in with the players we just drafted, uh, you know, f in the near future. So um, that's the that's the game plan. Um, having said that, uh, I did forcibly retire Joe Pacwa. Um, if you saw yesterday's game, uh, we went and we looked at Joe Pacwa's log. Uh, John M. requested a look at the log. And so we took a look at it, and you could see he gave up 22 home runs in three innings uh, because of uh, him being a two-way player and not really being set up properly, I, I, I would assume. Um, but the good news was when I went to forcibly retire him, he was already in the minor league, so he had gotten switched out of the Angels' bullpen and into AAA, and I went ahead and just forcibly retired him anyway, so he didn't get called up later. So we won't see that again, um, but there are other two-way players um, that are on other teams, and I'm hoping that maybe with a little bit more time in the minors, maybe they will improve their overall ratings, but... I just don't think that's going to happen, and I just I also don't want to have the game um, get too far out of hand with a, one player wrecking it for everyone. You know, um, I don't know what impact Joe Pacwa had on the California Angels being in last place, um, but he was 0-4. That was his record, and then giving up 22 runs in three innings is certainly is not going to help uh, the Angels' uh, ERA, which is the third worst in the American League. So um, so I think we did the right thing. All right, we got rid of them and um, we move on. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. I'm up to 332 subscribers. I had two more over the last couple of days. Welcome to the newbies. I appreciate any time at all that you give to my channel. We got Bob Meyer on the mound. He has been clobbered by the White Sox, um, batting 309 against them in 60 plate appearances. Take a look at the bullpen here. Mudcat Grant is on his last uh, day of being tired. So, um, And then after today's game, there's a day off. We will advance that day. And because of that, I moved Marty Patton from the number five starter up to the number three spot. So he will get the start in the... Uh, of the first game of the next series. He is our second best pitcher, but he'll be in the number three spot behind Bob Meyer. Okay, then we have uh, our lineup versus Greg Ballo. I'm just grabbing at straws here. Kessinger back there at shortstop and Van Kelly at third, giving um, Rich Rollins the day off. He was listed as tired. I know we could have played him today with the off day tomorrow, but we'll give him two days off in a row. Uh, Balo, I mean Balo, uh, Rollins uh, leads the team in hits 
was 72. I bet you didn't know that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Seattle Pilots. Batting leadoff, playing second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting second, playing first base is Mike Hegan. Batting third in center field is Don Bosch. Batting cleanup in left field is Tommy Agee. Batting fifth in right field is Tommy Harper. Batting sixth in catching is Jerry McNerney. Batting seventh at third base is Van Kelly. Batting eighth at shortstop is Don Kessinger. And batting ninth is Bob Meyer. Okay, we'll take a look here at Greg Ballo. We have faced him before. We already did a deep, deep dive on him. Uh, he's making his ninth start. Uh, there is an injury in the rotation to uh, Joe Horlin, and that's why uh, Greg Ballo has been moved up to the third spot in the rotation. He's 3-4 and four with a 4.38 ERA, 36 strikeouts in 51 and a third innings pitched. Opponents betting 242 with a complete game. Fastball tops out at 90. Um... But his screwball is his best pitch. It's rated in 96. That's crazy good. Fastball below average. Overall in 86. The 25-year-old righty goes to arbitration in 1971. Okay, there's the defense for the White Sox. Pretty solid. Um, except for up the middle. What are they doing here? They have Bradford at second. They have a center fielder playing second base. <laughs> And they have, well, they have Woody held it short, who is just old and, and decrepit. And then, of course, um, Pavlitic behind home plate. So up the middle, they are not good at all. Let's see if we can take advantage of that. Here's Gary Sutherland. Sutherland had a double and a home run yesterday. Batting 347, three home runs. And popping it up to third. Oh, and an error by the third baseman, right? Yeah, third baseman. Bill Melton getting into to, uh, today's game. So, I feel very low energy today, so I, I would love to get a mogul in going here early on. Let's take advantage of this. A comebacker to Balo, and another error! Oh, no. <laughs> this is definitely a moguling happening here. How many consecutive errors has anyone ever had in a, you know, in, in a game? Like uh, three, four, five? How many plays in a row can we get with an error? First and second, here's Bosch. Moved him up to the number three spot. Betting 265 versus righties. A ground ball in the hole to Held. And he cannot turn two. Gets the force at second. It is now first and third with one out. We're going to request a sack fly from Tommy Agee here. Try to get on the board, and a walk will load the bases. So we have good speed at first and second. And Tommy Harper up. I think we just have to let him take a cut here. Maybe. I mean, two errors and a walk. Maybe this is a, a grand salami waiting to happen. One will count. And a base hit the left field. That'll score two. And it's 2 nothing as Ag takes third. The Mogling. All right, first and third, two down. Jerry McNerty up. Let's see if McNerty can give us a sack fly. He is a good bunner. Um, so, you know, why couldn't he do both? It's all about the sacrifice. Oh, it's a ground ball to second. Bradford, the center fielder, turns a double play. <laughs> two errors, a walk, and a double play started by the center fielder playing second base. And this game is good how? I don't know. It's 2 nothing though. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the White Sox lineup. Batting leadoff at second base is Buddy Bradford. Batting second at first base is Bob Spence. Batting third and catching is Don Pavlitic. Batting cleanup, playing third base is Bill Melton. Batting fifth at shortstop is Woody Held. Batting sixth in left field is Carlos May. Batting seventh in right field is Walt Williams. Batting eighth in center field is Ken Barry. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Greg Ballo. Okay, let's take a look at Bob Meyer making his 15th start. One of two starters to make every start so far this year. He is 3-5 and five with a 463 ERA, 64 strikeouts and 72 innings pitched. 
He walks a ton of batters, and he gives up a lot of hits. Um, he's only got two pitches, but one that's effective. That's a fastball. Topping out at 97 miles an hour at rated at 95. That'll help get his uh, overall rating to the league average of 80. The 29-year-old lefty goes to arbitration next year. Oh, let's look at his log. How has he done versus the White Sox? He's made three starts. Uh, I guess that's why he had 60 plate appearances. He got the win back in April, going seven and a third scoreless innings. And then he got crushed, taking the loss, giving up five and three. And then he got a no decision. So he's one, one, and one on the season, making his fourth start against the White Sox with Buddy Bradford leading off. There's our defense, pretty solid all the way around, other than our liability out there in right. Um, if, we, if we trade Harper, we may lose a little bit in batting, but we have a 229 batting average anyway, so like, who cares? But we'll gain something defensively. Like we'll probably, well, I don't know, we can, hype, we, can, we can guess later what's gonna happen, but here we go. Buddy Bradford leading off, base hit. Oh, it's a line drive right at Hegan. There we go. Robbing another base hit at first. Good job by him. One down. Bob Spence up. Spence strikes out on the fastball. Two quick outs for Bob Meyer. Here's the catcher, Don Pavlitic. And he flips it into left center field. Is that going to fall in? Nope. It'll carry deep enough to left field where AG makes the catch. We go to the top of the second. Two nothing pilots. Also, let me give a nod here to Don T, who suggest, suggested moving AG to left field and having Bosch in center. I'm not sure how I missed that, but I do think that has been apparently a, a very good idea because, I mean, you can see how a few balls are falling in, um, like those uh, little duck snort hits since we did that. Okay, here we go. Van Kelly leading off. Kelly playing his natural position, third base today. Flipping it to left. 306 feet caught by the left fielder, Carlos May. One down. Don Kessinger had a base hit in yesterday's game, which is, you know, always of note. Popping out to second, uh, shortstop. And Bob Meyer with two down as a 2-0 count. Tried to fool him with that screwball, but he gives it a ride. 323 feet for out number three. So one, two, three inning. We go to the bottom of the second. Here's Bill Melton leading off. 3-1 count to Melton, and he walks him. Runner on first for Woody Held. Held two for five and two walks against Meyer this year. And is that going to be a base hit? Yeah, it's going to be up against the wall. Melton stops at third. How is that not a double? I don't know. Um, maybe they've heard about Harper's arm. He's got three outfield assists this year. We can afford to give up one run for a double play possibility. Held does not have good speed. Carlos May technically does not either. Plus it's lefty on lefty. Striking him out. Second K by Meyer. And a double play here would get out of the inning. Williams a little bit better speed. Rated 82. And a fly ball to the left. That's not going to be deep enough to score Melton. Now, should we walk Barry, a 316 hitter versus lefties, to get to the pitcher? Or does that just smell like a wild pitch coming if we do that? Like, they're going to get a run no matter what. I mean, we know, like, like if this was actual baseball manager managing, we would definitely never walk Ken Berry in the first inning. But we already know what's going to happen. Base hit. Oh, it's going to be snagged by the second baseman, and we do get out of it. That was uh, about as close as you can get to giving up a run. So maybe Bob Meyer is going to be good today. We go to the top of the third, and our leadoff man is Gary Sutherland. Sutherland, despite playing only 28 games, leads our team co-leader with nine doubles. Him and Rich Rollins. 
Who will be the first to 10 on the team? My money's definitely on Sutherland. Another two quick outs and a one, two, three, and his Bosch pops out onto the outfield grass behind second. Moving to the third with Greg Ballo leading off. Ballo batting 118, strikes out looking three Ks for Meyer. Top of the lineup with Buddy Bradford. Bradford rolls it down to third. Van Kelly making the play. Two down for Bob Spence. Eight home runs leading the team, and he strikes out looking. So things are going well here for Meyer. He needed a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the top of the fourth, with Tommy Agee leading off, and Agee walks. We have got to absolutely 100% try to steal second base. Terrible defenders up the middle. Terrible catcher behind the plate. And a, a right-handed pitcher on the mound. Curveball and screwball, actually, at AG is safe at second. That is his 18th stolen base. 18 and out of 24. So what is that, 75%? Quick math, runner on second. Here we go, Tommy Harper trying to add to the lead. Line drive to left, get down. No, it's gonna be caught. If we were gonna test anybody in the outfield, it would be Carlos May. 60% chance, good speed, below average arm. He's safe at third. That was a risk, but we're up two runs. It was well worth taking. They're playing back on the infield here. We're going to have them go on contact. I don't know if I've ever actually used this. There we go. Ground ball to short. That's easy run scored. Three to nothing. And yet we've only had one hit. Give McNerty an RBI there. Another RBI. Two down for Van Kelly. Kelly hits a ground ball to Woody, and that'll do it. So we put one more on the board. It's 3 0. Headed to the bottom of the fourth with Don Pavlitic leading off. Ground ball, sharply hit to first, but Hegan handles everything over there. Hegan has made one error this year, but that was in left field. And I think he's played equal games at both positions. Bill Melton with one out, flies out to left. There's two down. And here is Woody betting 303 versus lefties. Striking out five Ks for Meyer. We're going to the top of the fifth. Up by three and Don Kessinger. Just crushing righties. 170 batting average. 156 overall. Oh, he had ball four. He just does not want to touch first. Oh, uh, Kessinger. Thank goodness he has good defense. Meyer gets another shot. Ground ball to short. Sutherland hitless today. Third time through the lineup, though. Rips it into left field for out number three. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Bob Meyer at 56 pitches. I feel like he's, since this is the bottom of the inning, I feel like we're going to be okay here. But after that, we have to keep an eye on him. Carlos May. We hit a little rainbow out to left center field. Caught by AG for out number one. And then Walt Williams gets a base hit. He's got to get it in quickly. There we go. Keeps him to a single. Runner on first, one down. Um, we're going to pull third base in. I don't think he's going to bunt with one out. The pitcher up next, but we're just going to play it safe here. 2-2 two -two count. Popping it up. Psyched him out. Bringing him into the grass. There's out number two, and the pitcher, Balo, will bat. Down three. He's only given up one hit. And one walk. Balo skies it on the infield. Carrying to shallow left for out number three. Okay, we are going to the sixth inning. Mike Hegan 
will lead off. Hegan walks. Well, it's the third walk for Balo. I think I just said one, but now he's got three. That's on me. No attention to detail. Runner on first. Here's Bosch. Bosch hits a ground ball to third. Round the horn. Oh, no. They go to first to get the uh, out, but he can advance it. So we have another runner in scoring position. Let's add to the lead. We, we can't have too many runs with our bullpen. That's a high fly ball to center field from Ag. Super deep. He can tag and take third easily. So we have a run 90 feet away. Harper, three for eight with a home run and a walk against Ballo. And a wild pitch scores the fourth run. That is cheap. We'll take it. I mean, it just takes away an RBI. We don't, we don't drive in enough runs as it is. I think if you were to go around the American League at least and take a look at which team leader in RBI is the lowest, it would definitely be us as we're approaching midseason. And then Harper strikes out after the wild pitch scores the fourth run. So it's 4 nothing. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning, I absolutely feel like we can give Meyer one more inning. Here's Buddy Bradford. Playing pretty good second base today. Oh, shit. All right. So we have um, a left-hander here. This will probably be the last batter then for Meyer. Maybe we can get double play. Spence is only batting 088. Struck out both times. And Bradford steals second base, four runs down in the sixth. That is stupid, stupid baseball on every level. A comebacker to Meyer. That was a ground ball, apparently. Bradford advances to third. And that will do it for Bob Meyer. Meyer comes out of the ball game. We're going to bring in Skippy Lockwood. Skippy gave up his first run of the year yesterday on a home run. Solo shot. Not a big deal, but ultimately he's been pitching okay. In his uh, first time in the bigs. We're not really worried about that run. Uh, we're worried about the batter here. So Lockwood going after Pavlitic. And there's your wild pitch in return. So that run was always going to score. That's why they stole second base. Even though you would never steal second base in that position. And that run gets attributed to Meyer, but I don't know if that's an earned run or not. I guess we'll find out in the box score. Um, because the wild pitch was by Lockwood, but it doesn't give him a run. So I'm, I'm assuming that's unearned. And the infield single. Too early to guard the lines. Should have guarded the lines. There we go. Ground ball to first. And that'll do it. So the White Sox get on the board. There's their charity run. It's 4-1. to one. We still only have one hit today. As McNurtney leads off the inning. A little nubber to second. Where Bradford <laughs> makes the easy play. Making it all look easy at second base. How can we only have one hit? There we go, Van Kelly. That's a double. Good job by him. And he worked the count, too. Nine pitches. Van Kelly, that is his sixth double of the year. Average under 200. Okay. So, a runner at second. Don Kessinger up. Can Kessinger come through? He does! He rips it off the wall in right field. Get that run back. And we're going for three. He is safe at third with a triple. Nicely done. Good job by Kessinger. That is his second extra base hit since coming over. His OPS almost a 400. All right. So Skippy coming out of the ball game. We do want to try to add to this lead. Um, let's bring in Darren Johnson to pinch hit. He's been relegated to the bench. I mean, he does have five home runs this year. Four of them as a pilot. 
But otherwise, he just strikes out every time he's up. 1-2 count. Strikes out looking. And Sutherland. Ground ball in the hole to short. And that'll do it. All right. So we get the run back that we just gave up on a wild pitch. And Darren Johnson will come out. We're going to bring in a pitcher here. It is going to be... Um, it's going to be Ron Locke. It is the bottom of the lineup. we got a lefty leading off, and then some righties. I think we can trust them. And if not, we'll bring in Diego, who took the loss last time he came in. So here's Carlos May leading off the bottom of the seventh, lefty on lefty, and a base hit. And might even be more. Oh, no. Wow, Harper, good job getting the ball back in. So now we have a problem. I would not be surprised if this gets away from us here. Here's Walt Williams betting 375 versus lefties. Oh, slow roller to second. Let's turn two. Okay, well, we get the force at second. Good job, Locke. Does he throw um, a lot of ground balls? Yes, 51% of the time. That's more than half. Okay, runner on first. Ken Barry. If you could be any Barry, what kind of Barry would you be? Oh, Barry gets a base hit to right. They're going to pinch hit for ball. They're not pinch hitting for the pitcher. Sweet baby Jesus. Okay, so we are going to bring in third. And maybe Rock could, uh, Locke could just um, strike him out here. That would be nice. He's swinging. Ground ball to second. And a double play. All right. That is really lame. Trying to win it all today. All right. Well, we go to the top of the eighth inning. Here's Mike Hegan leading off. Keegan walks for the second time today. That will bring up Don Bosch. 2-1 count to Bosch. He's 0-3 today. Ground ball up the middle. Of course, the guy who's never played second base gets to every ball and turns the second double play of the game. This game is so lame. Unbelievable how bad this game is. AG flies out to center. And we're taking out Ron Locke. We're going to bring in Diego Segui. Segui, terrible game last time. Came in, gave up the game-winning home run, took the loss. Um, in his last 20 games, he's got a 4.13 ERA, so not, not so good. Here we go, Buddy Bradford. Um, I guess we're going to take out Har well, Harper Bats in the ninth. I think we're going to leave Harper in there. All right, here we go. Buddy Bradford leading off, and he hits it. Oh, God. Bradford doubles. Bradford having the freaking game of the life. That's his first double on the season to go with three triples. And did he played second base before? He's never played second base before today. Ever. Right. So runner in scoring position for Bob Spence. How long do we go with this crap? All right. He comes back, strikes him out. One down. Here's Pavlitic. Striking him out on the fork ball. He forked him over good. Two down. Bill Melton. Tough hitter. And there's the base hit. Oh, how does he not score from second? What is wrong with this game? There was two down on a base hit to center field. Uh, Bosch has a great arm, though. Or is the game setting up a three-run home run? That is the question. Will Woody Held go deep here? That might be what's happening. Nope, it's a pop-up. That might be good enough to get out of it. Shallow center. 
No error. Okay, we're going to the ninth inning. Greg Ballo hanging in there as Harper leads off the inning. We kept him in there for a reason, and that was to ground out to short. One out. You know, this is, a, this is interesting if you think about it. He's given up three hits and four walks, so he's got seven. I don't think he's hit a batter. So his whip is below one today. I would still think we have to get one or two more base runners. There we go. There's one. This game is so predictable. And now we have to get one more. Van Kelly runner on first. Kelly's got a triple today. That is a high fly ball that's technically a foul ball, even though it landed in the stands. Whatever. And Kessinger, there's, there you go. So there you go, see? I'm just telling you. All right. I mean... I wouldn't use the word genius, but if you want to use it, I'm not going to stop you. Um, Danny Walton. I mean, like, I've played so many of these games that we know all the patterns. Um, it does surprise us every once in a while, but ultimately it's pretty easy. But, yeah, how can we only get four hits in a game where their middle infielders are, fifth, are 16 or more points below league average. Uh, we're not going to use Danny Walton in relief, but we will uh, in, for defensive purposes. But we will swap him out, and we will bring in Mike Marshall. We have tomorrow off, so we can bring in. We can use everybody. It doesn't matter. So Marshall comes in. We're going to take out Harper and bring in Wayne Comer, right? Not that apparently defensive ratings mean anything in this game. They don't. But otherwise, Harper wouldn't be as good as he is, and that middle infield would have caused six or ten errors today. Carlos May leading off. Ground ball, base hit, past our best defender. So that's eight hits for the White Sox today. Walt Williams walks. Okay, let's just get it over with. Ground ball to first. Pinch hitter. It's Gail Hopkins. Gail Hopkins had a pinch hit game winner. That was the one that um, beat Diego. Base hit the right. Five to two. Here's Buddy Bradford striking out. And Bob Spence. Fly out to left center field. So they got their garbage run back. That was going to happen. And the Pilots win 5-2. to two. Handshakes, butt snaps, sloppy stakes. So we'll take a win to finish off the series. And it's not simulating. So we'll go ahead and play one more day. Um, advancing a day because of the day off. Now it's going to simulate for 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, there is a trade offer. Okay, a big one here. So they're asking for Yvonne Morell, who cares, and Bob Meyer. Do we want to let Bob Meyer go? Because um, we want to get rid of Steve Barber. Maybe if they take Barber, I might do this deal. Uh, let's talk. Let's take a little talk. Um, okay, so they're offering us someone named Pedro Ramos. There he is. Oh, he's not a starter anymore. He says starting pitcher, but he hasn't started one game in four years. Um, so he's a, he would be a reliever. Um, wow, his control is a 91, but his command is a 67. Oh, he hasn't pitched in the majors in two years. Holy shit. Okay, well, this guy's not great, but he's a body. And I'm not opposed to that. Jerry May, catcher. No rating, no good rating. Uh, he is playing this year, betting 341. 
And good gap power, good eye. Uh, great arm behind the plate, but his range and fielding not so good. So that's, you know, below average player. We got Ron Campbell, second baseman, third baseman, 29 years old. He is in the majors. No power. No, he's got nothing. This guy, oh, he's rated a 62. Uh, we don't want him. So we would take him off. Now, Johnny Jeter. Oh, shibby. There we go. Scouting. Johnny Jeter, center fielder. Great defensively everywhere. I like that a lot. Uh, good arm. Great range. Below average fielding. And below average everything else. Great speed. Okay, we like him a lot. This is a good trade so far. And then Fra Freddie Patek wants it three home runs in a game, despite being five foot one or something. Um, great defensively, can play multiple positions on the infield. Only 24 years old, awesome speed. He's got really nothing else to offer, but look at the defense. Holy shnikey, I love that. Okay, let's see if we can't give them. We want to keep Bob Meyer. We want to give them Steve Barber. This is a great trade. Where's he at? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Three years. That's a lot of money, though. All right. Let's um, balance the cash. Oh, the trade is evenly balanced. All right. I think this is good. Should we see if they want to throw in a relief pitcher? Um... Uh, let's see. Let's go all the way to the bottom, right? Okay. Um, we don't. We we're not gonna be able to steal somebody from them. Um, like you know, but like maybe like this Denny Riddle Burger. I like my burgers riddled. Um. But maybe like that range could help us. Is he a right-hander or a left-hander? Oops, I always do that. He is a left-hander. That would be a good fit with um, Barber leaving because we only have that other uh, left-hander that we sent to the miners earlier. Will they give up a Riddleburger? Balance cash. Trade is evenly balanced. Okay, let's, let's do this deal. Two for five. I think this is a great deal, a deal we're going to do anyway. Submit the offer. I knew we could work this out. Go get some new hair gel. All right, we signed the deal. That's a good deal. That's the way, but you see, you saw the inner workings of my brain. Um, I guess let's take a look. Are there any, where are these players? Okay, Jerry May. <laughs> we need to, g oh, uh, okay, so what we're going to do is, um, at the uh, end of this game, I'm going to uh, put the double A team names up on the community page on the Brainiac Baseball uh, Card Breaks main YouTube page. Vote for the best team name because we need to start moving these players into other positions. We can't have three catchers in AAA. Um, but I think Freddie Patek can be better than Fred Stanley. I think Johnny Jeter can be better than Walton or Comer. So we have to think that through. Um, yeah, Jack Acker's back. Uh, John Morris was the lefty that we had up there before. But we might make a Riddleburg. Oh, they have him at, in double A, but we don't have a double A yet. So we're going to move him to triple A. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'll figure out the logistics later. Let's move on with this. Okay, uh, we got the win. Let's take a look at the standings. Yeah, one game below 500. Um, headline news. Uh, five to two victory. Seattle closes the gap with the A's. But uh, Bob Meyer, I think he got the win. That's going to be great for him. And other things happened. Uh, Norm Cash now traded. He was traded to uh, the Indians, and he had four hits. Um, didn't hit a home run though. It looks like, oh, while well, they describe it three different times. <laughs> okay. Uh, then George Orta gets five hits. The White Sox. On a roll. 
Uh, that must have been the the game that we had off because obviously it didn't happen in our game. Good job by them. That's it. Okay, transactions. Are there any other trades? No. What else has happened here? Mickey Lolich's brother, Ron, is going to miss two weeks with an ankle fracture. And Galen Pitts is going to miss 21 days uh, with a chipped kneecap. And then here's the deal here. You just saw it. We don't need to go into it again. I think that was a great trade. Maybe one of the better ones we've done so far. We certainly aren't going to miss either of those guys. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Again, stay tuned for the double A uh, team names. You can uh, vote for the best team name. We're going to do that through today is Sunday. We'll do that through next Sunday. And then uh, we'll, pick a, we'll pick the best team name. I'll take the tiebreaker if there is one. We're going to give player of the game to Tommy Harper. Uh, because he drove in two runs. Uh, Van Kelly had a double. Kessinger had a triple. Bob Meyer does get the win. He's four and five. The bullpen does their gerb. We can't fault Mike Marshall for giving up a run. It had to happen. Greg Ballo takes a loss. He threw 131 innings. Probably should have been out by the sixth, but they kept him in there. Okay, that's going to do it. So we'll come back tomorrow with game one of the next series. Until then, everyone have a great day.